It's July 29th, and we're continuing our study as we walk through the Old Testament. We've entitled this series, New Lessons in the Old Testament, and we began looking at some of the old patriarchs, and uh, we've recently spent a lot of time in the book of Psalms. And in the book of Psalms, we spent the last several weeks looking at what we call the Hallelujah Psalms, the Praise Ye the Lord, beginning at Psalm 146, and then last week we wrapped it up with Psalm 150. Praise Ye the Lord, the great emphasis in those few chapters to conclude that great book. The Old Testament is really more than just a book. It is a library of 39 books broken down into five major sections. There's the five books of Moses, the 12 books of history, the five books of poetry, the five what we call major prophets, and then the book of the 12, the 12 minor prophets. And when we think about the Old Testament, if you want to memorize the books of the Old Testament, if you can remember 12 in a row, you've got it down. 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. And so we've studied significantly the book of Job and the book of Psalms, but I want us to park in the poetry books over these next couple weeks, and I want to spend a little bit of time looking at the books of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. So tonight we'll begin looking at the book of Proverbs. Now, the book of Proverbs is an interesting book because it clearly has been written by more than one person. Like the Proverbs, the Psalms, uh, they, they they wrap together different ideas and different thoughts from different writers. Uh, we're convinced that Solomon served as the principal author of the book. First Kings uh, chapter 3 recounts that Solomon asked God for wisdom in his reign over Israel. God granted that requ request in First Kings 4. In fact, Solomon identifies himself as the source of most of this book. His name appears at the beginning of three distinct sections, uh, Proverbs 1, Proverbs 10, and Proverbs 25. And really, it covers the vast majority of the first 29 chapters. Uh, in a short section in chapter 22 expresses the words of the wise. Uh, Solomon may have compiled those from other people under the divine inspiration of God. And then we see the last two chapters are uh, labeled as being written by Ager and Lumiel. And we don't know a lot about those guys other than that they uh, wrote a chapter in the book of Proverbs and God preserved it for us to this day. The Proverbs are an incredible collection of great wisdom. It's a uh, Interesting that Solomon must have compiled this prior to his death, somewhere around 930 B.C., and the book stayed primarily with the southern kingdom, and we're told in Proverbs 25 through 29 that uh, Hezekiah's men compiled the works of Solomon in Proverb. We understand the Proverbs to be important to us because it really simply teaches us numerous short instructions for living an effective life on earth. You know, the Bible is packed full of wisdom. There are great stories of the heroes of the faith. The book of Psalms is packed full with practical and, and gut-level emotion and raw feeling. The book of Proverbs recounts over and over again the simplicity of wisdom that is from God. And it's completely an amazing book because it instructs us to the path of wisdom. Let me challenge you every day to pray for wisdom. Proverbs teaches us that in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We understand that that means to respect God because He deserves it. He's worthy of it. It means living our lives in light of who He is and the abilities and the gifts that He's given us so that we can live a life for Him. The Bible tells us, according to Proverbs 9, that we can discover knowledge and wisdom by searching for them through Him. Now, the book of Proverbs, Solomon tells us many things about practical righteousness. Have you ever thought about what does it mean to day in and day out live your faith? The book of Proverbs is a great teaching for that. Uh, in the first chapter, we're encouraged to understand that the book has come together, that we might live wisely. And again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, according to chapter 1, verse 7. So a wonderful book given to us that expresses for it the value of practical, short, easy-to-memorize sayings, wise sayings, nuggets for living, whatever you want to call them, but a valuable resource for us. One of the difficulties with the book of Proverbs is applying it. It's a very challenging book to preach through from verse 1 of chapter 1 through the end of the book because it's repetitious in many ways, and one chapter might have eight or ten great themes in it. But let me give you the simplest advice I can give you about the book of Proverbs. Read it. I know it sounds incredibly uh, simplistic and perhaps not very pastoral, but I want to just tell you, 
If you want to learn how to follow God and to discover how to love Him and serve Him and to gain wisdom for living, read the book of Proverbs. There's some great verses in the book of Proverbs. You're familiar with many great things out of Proverbs. I want to call your attention to just a couple of those in our lesson tonight. First, I would challenge you to remember Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, where the Bible tells us something very strong here. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. You know, if you think about our culture today, there was a time when arrogance was discouraged. Now it's almost the victory lap people take when they're arrogant. Hands that shed innocent blood, our society is guilty of that as a culture. The great sin of my generation. 50 million unborn babies never given a chance at life. A lying tongue. We have a culture that's built on lies. People promise things without any recourse when they fail to meet their promise. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Computer technology and the internet has let our wicked imaginations flourish. God hates that. He judged Noah's generation. He judged the Tower of Babel's generation because of the wickedness of their imaginations. Judgment is certain on our generation, isn't it? Feet that are swift and running to mischief. I would be guarded in saying this, but we have a culture that encourages people running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. Again, he's already said he hates a lying tongue. And he reiterates that he hates the false witness that speaks lies. And he that sows discord among brethren. You know, God's people need to work together at not believing lies and gossip. And the people of God need to practice wisdom by not sowing that discord. This is a powerful passage packed in the chapter 6. Many of you are also familiar with Proverbs 31, the chapter that speaks about that virtuous woman. But I want to share just something very practical with you tonight when I think of the book of Proverbs. Uh, today is July 29th. Let me challenge you to read the 29th chapter of Proverbs. You know, there are 31 Proverbs in that book. There are 31 days in a month. Now some have 30. February, I know, is shorter. But if you read the proverb number for the number of the day of the month, you can read through the book of Proverbs in a month. And you can do that every month. Many years ago, I was encouraged by a great hero of the faith to read a proverb a day. At the time, he said that the Lord convicted him of that when he was a college student, and he reads five Psalms and a proverb every day, and he reads through the book of Psalms and Proverbs every month during his morning devotional time, five Psalms and a proverb. And at that time, he said for 35 years, he'd been reading Proverbs and Psalms every month for 35 years at that point. And I assume he continued that until the Lord called him home. And then very recently, I had a conversation with another man I would consider one of my heroes of the faith, a very different kind of Christian scholar. The first one was a great pastor and leader in many ways. This second one's more of a theologian, more of an academician, a Christian leader. And he said early in his ministry, he got convicted about reading the book of Proverbs, a chapter a day. And he said for 12, 15 years, he did that every day for each month for 12 or 15 years. And he said it got to the place where he had memorized virtually the whole book of Proverbs and felt like his mind was wandering while he was reading the Proverbs. So as he prayed about things, he he felt led of the Lord to maybe focus his energies on some of the writings of Paul. And, and he, he just focused, he read the book, I believe it was Ephesians, every day for a month. And he really focused his energies in those directions. Ended up writing a book, actually, on the book of Ephesians, I believe. But I found it amazing that two very different yet very incredible men of God 
would counsel their friends and their students to read a proverb a day. And I want to reiterate the value of that. Can I encourage you to start your morning off by reading a proverb a day? You can download a Bible onto your cell phone and read it lying in bed. You can read it without disturbing anybody in your family. A proverb a day. And search out the wisdom that God has to offer. Oh, an old lady at my first church, she said that she had done something similar to that, and she said, a proverb a day keeps the devil away. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly the best counsel I could give you, but let me encourage you to read the book of Proverbs. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and that's where you'll find it in the book of Proverbs. If you'd like to know more about the book of Proverbs or about our Bible studies here at First Baptist, we're meeting right now at the date of recording anyway on Sunday mornings. We have an 845 service for those who deem themselves at risk because of COVID and other things and their caregivers and a 10 o'clock service for everyone else. And we are meeting on Wednesday nights at 630, our age graded classes and our adult Bible study. If you'd like to know more about knowing the Lord, you can go to our website at fbc-sellersburg.org. We have a link there at the top that says the gospel, and that'll take you to the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association's page where you can uh, learn from Billy Graham's people. What does it mean to be a Christian? If you'd email me at the church or call us here at the church, we'd love to talk to you and help you any way we can. If you live in Metro Sellersburg and you don't have a church home, we invite you to worship with us. We encourage you to continue to watch the videos if they're a blessing to you. And double check our website if you have any questions about what it means to know the Lord Jesus. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you that you've given us your word and we thank you for the book of Proverbs. Lord, may we apply those great wisdom and those great teachings to our lives every day. We love you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen.